This episode of the Rental Income Podcast is brought to you by the all-new FreshBooks, where you can easily track all your rental income and expenses and create invoices in just seconds. You can get a free 30-day trial. Just go to freshbooks.com slash RIP and enter Rental Income Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. My guest on the podcast today has a full-time job, but he's been working on building out his rental portfolio on the side, and he's done a really good job so far. He's picked up three properties already, and things are going really well for him. So I want to hear his story. I want to hear exactly how he started and how he got to where he is today. So let's take a real quick break. We'll get a word in from our sponsor today. We'll come back in 30 seconds and we'll meet Kevin Wood from Maryland. Are you on track to achieve your financial goals? Income producing real estate is the most historically proven way to accumulate wealth and has created more financial freedom than any other means. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best turnkey cash flow rental properties. Our simple proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly income. Get your free strategy session with our knowledgeable investment counselors at noradarealestate.com. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com. Kevin, what got you first? interested in buying rentals? Well, I guess uh, like with a lot of uh, your listeners and a lot of folks interested in the real estate business, really it came after uh, reading several books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad being uh, the, the first book that I read on real estate. And it really changed my mindset in terms of um, thinking about uh, passive income uh, and and how to continue to grow that um so that that's the that's the first thing that really got me interested in, in real estate. Yeah, a lot of times people struggle with taking that very first step and buying their their first property. W- was that hard for you? Uh, it, it was a little bit of a challenge at first, um, but after really looking at um, primarily my my four hundred one k and seeing after years of um, sitting in that account, and by the time you factor in your management fees and your, you know, the, the, the cost of living increases, the inflation, it just really, it, it didn't move the needle much. Mm-hmm. And sure. so I started to look at other options in terms of where can I put that money? And it really, um, it really came, I really wanted to be able to control it. And looking at real estate was, was the one option. So it was a difficult transition, uh, to make, especially for the first one, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it certainly got easier as as I went to uh, property number two and then number three. That's great. So let's talk about the first property. How did you find this property? So this was a little bit unique is, is that um, I, I was actually looking at Craigslist and came across a property that, that just came up on, on uh, Craigslist and made some phone calls and did a little bit of due diligence and negotiated back and forth. And after, uh, it actually took uh, a couple of months uh, for the seller to actually, and, and for myself to come to an agreement on on a purchase price for the property. So that that's how I, I came across my first one. Uh, give me some numbers. So what did you pay for the property and what, what's it rented out for? Sure. So I, I purchased the property for, uh, it's a single family home. It's an older farmhouse uh, built in 1910. So it's on a slab. It's a two bedroom, one bath, and uh, it's a nice little fenced yard. Um, and I purchased that property for sixty eight thousand, and put about five thousand, roughly five thousand, into it, uh, mostly cosmetic. Okay. And uh, and, and so um, right now I have that property rented out for nine fifty a month. Awesome. That's a home run. That's awesome. Now, what what kind of cosmetic work did you need to do to the property? Uh, painting, flooring, uh, put in a new, uh, hot water heater. Okay. And, uh, so that was pretty much it. I mean, it was really just a lot of painting, um, redoing a little bit of, uh, work in the bathroom, um, fixing up, uh, and updating some of that stuff. So it really, it really was, uh, mostly cosmetic. Did you do the work yourself or did you have contractors? I did a little bit of the work and then I had a couple contractors come in as well. Was it hard to find people? Yes, that that that's always a challenge, um, and you know, finding 
good reputable contractors and actually joined um, the Delria, uh, which is a Delaware rest, uh, real estate investors uh, group here in, in the Delaware area. And um, just networking through them and being on their Facebook group really provides some good information where you can find out from other investors mm-hmm. who they're using and who they recommend. And that, yeah. that's really been a, a good uh, resource. Yeah. Connecting with other local investors, I, I think is so valuable. I mean, you can learn so much. So, so they gave you, you the connections you had made, referred you to contractors that you ended up hiring. That's correct. Okay. Yes. How long did it take from the time you closed on the property until you had it on the market for rent? Uh, I would say, well, I had a little bit of a, a, a hiccup in that some of the workers that I had uh, do some work in the property originally accidentally turned off the heat. And uh, the winter here of, of uh, uh, 2015 was really, really a cold winter. And so I had several pipes break. Oh, no. And uh, so that really extended um, the, the time frame. So it took probably about uh, three to four months before I actually had it to where I uh, was in good enough shape that I felt to, to get it on. the market. Okay. Did, did the damp, did, did the pipes break and cause a lot of damage? It did. I mean, when I, when I went in there, which was several days, apparently after the water was running, it was, it, it was like an ice skating rink on the floor. Oh, there was no. water that had froze up and, uh, coming from the ceiling where the, uh, the toilet was wow. so it was a bit of a mess yeah did you have to make a claim on your insurance for that or did you just pay for that i did not okay no, I, I i just paid for it okay yeah. all right so three or four months you have the place on the market and then how long did it take to find a renter uh fairly quick um i w- within the first week or two i had uh, uh several applications and uh, made a decision and then, so within uh, three weeks, we had uh, it rented. Awesome. And how did you find your tenants? Or where did you advertise the property? So I advertised on uh, on Zillow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and that that brought in a, a bunch of phone calls and a bunch of showings, and then uh, eventually you, you kind of narrowed it down to the best candidate. That, right? That's right. Okay. Awesome. Well, well, that property seems like it's cash flowing really well, right? I mean, that, that's that, that seems like it was a, a great deal. And do, do you, do, looking back on it, is there anything you would have done differently? No, I, I, I think, you know, looking back, it, it was a great first property. Obviously, I learned a lot in terms of, you know, your contractors. And so really, I look at, if you break even on a first property, I think, it, you, you know, the, the seminar that you get, as a result of that is a win. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, the, the, it's the icing on the cake seeing that it's cash flowing. Um, and again, you know, it's each property, I think you'll learn different aspects. And as you right. continue to grow, um, you just sort of learn more, it becomes a little easier for you. Yeah. Um, so th- now the, the time from when you purchase the property until you got it on the market, that, that couple of months, that, that seems like a long time to me. Like, do, do you want to, um, or have you been able to get that, that period of time shorter with the, the, the properties you bought after that? Or is, is that just what it takes to, to get a property on the market? Yeah, I, th- I think for the first property, just being new and I didn't have contractors lined mm, up yeah. and I didn't have, you know, and then we, we ran into the hiccup with, you know, we with, had things right. ready to go to market and then when. Uh, you know, the pipes burst. Yeah. So that really added to it. And then uh, the cleanup and, and then redo the drywall and all that. So I, I, I'm i sure that, that the time frame could have been compressed quite a bit. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those things that just learning and um, certainly the second one property that I get into, we can talk about that a little bit. The, the, the time frame on that was much more compressed in terms of the turnover. I definitely want to hear about the second property, but this is probably a great time to take a real quick break and thank our sponsor today, FreshBooks.com. I love rental properties. I love everything about it except for the numbers part. Uh, I don't know what it is, but me and accounting, I've just always had a disconnect. But now that I've got FreshBooks, it's no big deal at all. Um, if you want to create an invoice... If you want to remind your tenant that the rent is coming due or charge them for a late fee or any damage they may have caused to the property, a couple of clicks, maybe 30 seconds, and you've got them out an invoice. 
Keeping track of your expenses, super easy. You can easily input your uh, repairs or maybe any HOA fees you may have paid, your cell phone bills, mileage for your car. You put it in there at tax time. It's super easy. Couple of clicks and you've got a report over to your CPA and that's it. Like you don't have to worry about it. Tax time used to be a really stressful time for me. Now I don't dread it. Like tax time is is going to be a breeze this year all because of FreshBooks. The the other great thing with FreshBooks is they have incredible customer service. If you need to call, they answer the phone right away. They've got the friendliest people in the world over there. It, it's like they're excited that you're calling them. I, I absolutely love FreshBooks. They're offering our listeners a free 30-day trial. If you want to try it out, there's absolutely no obligation. You can go to freshbooks.com slash RIP and enter rental income podcast in the how did you hear about us section, and they'll give you a free 30-day trial. You can try it out, see if it's for you. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, there's absolutely zero obligation You can just cancel it, and they're not going to charge you anything. So again, it's freshbooks.com slash RIP and enter rental income podcast in the how did you hear about us section. All right, let's get right back to the interview. So Kevin, tell me about the second property. So the the second rental was a property that I actually located on uh, Zillow. It really, it it was through a wholesaler, but it came up uh, the for one day, I think it was actually on Zillow for one day when I, when I saw it, um, I contacted the, the uh, wholesaler that morning and then went to look at it that afternoon and had a contract that afternoon on it. So Incredible. It was wow. A run. Yeah. And, uh, um, and I just didn't want to lose it. So, right. uh, you know, took a leap of faith on it and, uh, and it really worked out well. So tell me about that house. What's it like? So that house is actually, it's a single family home on, uh, almost two acres of property. And, uh, the purchase price on that was 48,000. Wow. Okay. And what do you have that rented out for? So that I have it rented out for a thousand fifty dollars. Awesome. Which is probably a little under market, but, um, uh, I think that, uh, when this tenant gets out, we'll, we'll go ahead and reevaluate that. Did, um, did that need any work? Or, it, it did. I, okay. I put about uh, twenty thousand into it. Okay. Okay. Now, what about the the two acres? Does um has that been a problem getting the tenant to maintain the lawn, or do you take care of that? So uh, it's it's kind of split. The way I have uh, worked out with the tenant is they they're responsible for the property around the residence, and then sort of next door to that is where there's a big empty lot. Okay. Um, so I'm responsible for, for that portion of it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that, that does get a little, uh, you know, expensive with, uh, with the lawn cutting. That's yeah. for sure. So, and for the part of the lawn that they're responsible for, ha- has there been any problem? Like if you drive by, is the lawn ever going crazy or ha- have they been doing a good job of, of maintaining it? No, they, they've been fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, That's they've, great. they've been maintaining it great. Um, and the, the gentleman that lives in there is in the military and he's, you know, pretty, uh, he likes things organized. So he he does a great job. Perfect. Now, how about the financing on that one? Cause usually wholesalers want you to close really quick. Um, w- were you able to finance that or did you use cash? I, I did use cash. Okay. On that one. Okay. Awesome. Did you, um, did you refi to take your money back out or are you just leaving the, the, the cash in that deal? Yeah, what what I did on that one is I actually did a HELOC on that property to use that money towards my third property awesome. I purchased. That's a great way to do it. So you, you have a line of credit, you can write a check, and that's what you did. You you wrote the check and bought another house. Correct. That's awesome. I right. always love when a house can buy another house. That that's kind of like magic to me. So all right, <laughs> so tell me about the the third house. Well how did you find that one? So the third house I actually I, I purchased off of uh, auction dot com. Okay. And uh, it was a townhouse that came up in uh, in the Baltimore area, and uh, I thought it was a really good deal. The challenge was I couldn't really get in to take a look at it. So that one again was a little bit of a leap of faith in yeah. terms of I knew the area really well. I knew what the rents would would be. Uh, the caveat I didn't have a really good idea on 
what the inside of the property looked like. Right. Um, outside of looking through, you know, the windows, but, um, you know, that was again, a learning experience. I think it was a, a you know, I, for the numbers, I purchased it for 120,000. Um, and I put about 20,000 into that one as well. So I'm all in that one at about 140,000. Were you thinking it needed about 20,000 or were you off? Um, no, I, I, really budgeted of actually about 25,000. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, and, uh, yeah, I had a guy do able to come in and do some really reasonable work for me. Um, I had some plumbing issues and they cut out the copper piping and some other stuff. But, uh, you know, when I went in there, I, I, I didn't want to have, you know, a six year old water heater. So we went in and, and replaced the water heater and some of them, you know, um, um, uh, dishwasher and, and range and, and all those things. So a lot, again, a lot of that was cosmetic carpeting, um, paint, uh, you know, so, so, um, yeah, we were all in about $20,000 worth of work on that. You know, I love that you're proactively changing the hot water heater. Cause that's the kind of thing that it, it's not a, a, a huge cost, but it, it's the kind of thing that if you don't do it up front, one day it's going to go bad and it's going to be an emergency and it might even cause some damage to the property. So I, I think it's smart to get that taken care of up front and then you don't have to worry about it for seven or eight years or however long it lasts for. That's yeah, um, I, I agree a hundred percent. And the last thing you want to do is, you know, have, uh, you know, the tenant with the storage in the basement and come to you and say, well, you know, here's, all my boxes of family heirlooms are yep. now damaged as a result. And, and so it's just, it, it's so much easier to do it in the outset and, and know that that's done. Right. Especially it, like you said, it's, it's relatively an inexpensive fix. Yeah. So how much is that property rented out for? So that property is rented out for uh 1550 a month. Okay. 1550. And so you're all in at one forty. That's um, that's good to know. So you used part of the, the equity you had in the second property, was that your down payment for this property or how did you finance the rest yeah, of it? Yeah, I actually, I, I, I paid uh, for that property using my entire line of, uh, of the HELOC. So I paid uh, cash on that. Okay. Okay. That. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So where do you see yourself going from here? Do, do you want to buy more properties or do you want to sit on it and see how things go? Well, I, um, Right now, it's just it's a more difficult market right now. I think you know it's compressed cap rates and and and, and the the good deals are out there. They're just more difficult to find. So I'm really kind of uh, I'm looking at a property today. Um, so I'm still interested, still in the game, but uh, I'm not. Uh, I really want to make sure that the numbers make sense. And uh, so uh, you know, my my goal is to continue to grow my portfolio um, at a very conservative pace. And, uh, you know, and, and, and build over the next maybe 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now, before the show, we were talking about your why and why you're buying rentals. And I, I think this is awesome. It, t tell everyone why you, you, you're doing this. Well, I think, you know, and you hear a lot about, you know, your, the why behind what you do and you have to have a big enough why, because if, if you don't, especially in the real estate game, you're going to get frustrated. There's going to be things that pop up that are just going to, you're going to figure out why am I, why am I wasting my time doing this? You know, all the money that I seem to make, it goes out to expenses or the tenant, you know, trashes your, your property and, and there goes your cash flow for the year. So I think, you know, it's really in terms of to weather the storm, you really need a strong why. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's, it's really that, um, I have two daughters and I, I want them to, be able to, uh, I wanted to be able to pass down to them so that they don't have to, to, to t you know, take a job that they may not like because they make more money there. Um, I want them to really be able to uh, follow their passion and their dream, whatever that may be. You know, I, my one daughter wants to be a school teacher. And so I really want them to be set for the future and not really have to worry about the next paycheck. And if I continue to be able to uh, build the portfolio, then that that'll help with that. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it's all about choices in life, and and having rentals and having passive income really lets you make the choices that you want to make. So I, I think that's that's a great why. Well, well, Kevin, congratulations. I, I'm I'm really 
really proud of you that you've built this great portfolio over the, over the last three years. And, and I wish you continued success in growing it from here. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate everything you do on your podcast, all the value that you share with uh, your listeners. And uh, certainly over the over the years, I've, I've gotten a lot of value out of your show. So I, I really appreciate what you do. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening. And thank you for subscribing to the show. We'll be back with a new interview next Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.